Thanks, Jill. Kia ora koutou, nga ko Chauncey Adel, taku noa. Um, thanks for Pekan and Swaf Tanaki for inviting us here and putting us on today, it's really great. I'm really aware we're behind schedule now, as we told we've got very little time. So I'm going to really breeze through this stuff, but obviously a lot of you will know a bit about it. I've worked with a lot of you before anyway, um, and um, just kind of ask me any questions, and we're just revamping our website too, if I'm going to see having a dedicated website too towards Prefect Tanaki coming up by the end of the year, so I've just go there and have a look if you've got any questions around this stuff later on. Alright, so just quickly, obviously towards Prefect Tanaki is a um, really about this. Um, it's a restoration project, it's an heavily involved in, in predator control, but really it's about the outcomes really. So it's these guys here, and the next thing is obviously he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. We, it's about the people and what we're doing to do this. So really, you know, um, I'm going to keep going. Predators, of course, we all know those, we all ran over that. And I'm just going to sort of uh, extrapolate a little bit on the sort of people interaction with how we do this stuff as well. So, yeah, it's the sort of the big guys there. In the urban space, we're really looking at a lot of rat control. Possums we've had a good uh, success with over the last few years, but we need to get back into it. And obviously, we're catching, uh, just so you know, Neil, quite a few stoats and weasels around the peri urban part of Yukon as well. So, it's quite interesting. Um, we're building on our success, Quinn talked a little bit about this before, obviously we had a, a self-help possum program over the last sort of 25 years, we went into the urban space about five years ago in New Plymouth, with the cost control there, obviously we've got our, our national goal of Predator Free 2050 coming up, um, so we want to support that and obviously looking at this as being a spillover from the Tanaki Mama project as well, which is working in our national park, um, and sort of obviously um, and all those great rest uh, restoration goals that we've got under Wild Tanaki as well. So, very great. Quick overview of the other parts of it that I'm not really working on. Obviously, we've got urban up here. Where's my pointer? Uh, it's one of these ones. Anyway, you can see that. Um, and oh, quick show this before. Anyway, so we've got our um, urban stuff, which is basically you know all the urban space starting in Plymouth, but we're working all around the region as well. Some really great projects going on in South Tanaki as well. Um, and then we've got zero possums and kaitakis up there, you can see, and obviously research and monitoring. And we really appreciate the, uh, the work that we do with our partners in Manaki <coughs> Fenua uh, to get where we're getting to. So, in the rural space, we're obviously everything's uh, we're tracking this is the first year, this was last year, the wild go catchment. And we've, we've, all the traps there are, have got sensors on, so they can tell the long way where that trap's been thrown, make it easier for people to. To, um, to check your traps, and you can just see there that's a network of traps we've got through that, that wild kind of catchment right now. So it's pretty impressive. Um, and then obviously, restore Kaitaki, this is a bit of a detailed map, really, but um, what it's basically doing is it's supporting the work that DOC and the community are doing there in the national park and having a buffer area around there where we're very close with all the landowners and the um, earth people in the urban space as well. Um, and again, it, it's that sort of that strength and multi party collaboration, which is really great. And so we all talk about that all the time. But we found here the support's been really great, and, um, and people are very keen to sort of see this happen. So you go, going along with that makes it a lot easier. Um, there's some great urban trappers there, like here today, Terry and Angela. Um, and this just shows in the urban space what we're trying to do is identify what everyone else has been doing. And I, you know, I've told you what we'll be talking about. This really supports what all the other presentations and the people here have been talking about. Um, it's that community connectivity and getting people engaged and doing this sort of stuff as well. And likewise, what Bruce was saying, those health uh, benefits we get, you know, we, we see that a lot. We know that being out in your natural environment is very good for you. Um, and we see that a lot. Also, those uh, economic benefits which we see, um, and oh, just that normalisation of community control. We talk about this a lot. Uh, people sort of moved away from this with, you know, better um, well built houses. You didn't get rodents coming in like we did back in the you know, a you know, century ago, so people sort of got away from having to do that themselves. But we want to make sure we're doing this for lots and lots of different reasons as well, so uh, it's about changing those behaviours. Um, over 2,000 people now have signed up to do this uh, in the urban space. Um, <coughs> we talk about signing up to the project, and I guess that's the thing, because we're an agency leading this, we sort of have to have data on this. Um, and But you really, it's, it's been really great, it hasn't, it's been Steamrolling really. Uh, we're growing the network by working with our community groups, many of you are here today, and that's fantastic because getting the support, uh, being able to support what's already happening and what people already believe in is the best way we can kind of move forward on these things. Uh, from this, we're growing our sort of community champions, really people that have a bit more of a vested interest and they want to put a bit more time into supporting what we're doing. Uh, and they are really advocates and administrators, the sort of public face of, of what we're trying to achieve. 
uh, rather than just having lots of people from the agency running around telling people what to do. So uh, we've done that through our store groups, and that's really aligning with Wild Taranaki's goals, restored Taranaki goals, and they can talk about that after me. Later on. Um, and the school involvement's been amazing and incredible. Our young people, are, you know, Tamariki are really showing that they have this initiative and we're giving them the space to have the initiative and run these sort of projects and be involved and think about how they're going to make these positive changes and difference in our, in our communities and in our environment. Um, so you can see there, sort of a, you know, I'm not really numbering for things, but there's over three, uh, uh, 3,300 traps there deployed, that's in our sort of reserves network and in people's backyards. So a bit of a mixture in those red dots you see there. And yeah, just reiterating that New Plymouth, <laughs> very lucky to have all this wonderful uh, waterways and uh, bush remnants and things as well. So very cool. Um, going a little bit further into community champs, you can see there a young, young girl there who's taken a real <laughs> interest in this in her community. Uh, she's out there trapping and sort of networking with people where she was doing things like putting flyers in people's letterboxes around the community saying, come and buy a trap from our school and, and get involved. So these, these are what we've got, community motivators, what we're saying, people that are out there sort of engaging with their um, people face to face, uh, or sometimes just, you know, keyboard warriors that really get out there and just spread the word, the good word, and the outcomes as well, and sharing those tips and how do we, how do we improve. Uh, we've got a great network of reserve trappers, and obviously Laura does some really wonderful work with NPDC on that, and uh, we're really grateful that they've, they've taken that up as well and helped, and helped all of us to try and achieve those goals. And you can see here, it gives that community ownership of being able to do that work in your own space. Because like we said, all this, of what we're talking about here is having, you know, biodiversity where we work, you know, work, live and play, you know. So, um, in safety first, I always stress that we do this supervised and it's all, we use the appropriate um, gloves and teaching people how to use these traps, not just send kids out there and go for it, you know. So it's all good stuff. Education goals, really, of course, we have lots of diverse aims and abilities, so trying to recognise that support that sort of diversity and the different levels of involvement with the schools. Um, but we want, we want to support this, uh, you know, this collaborative community education model, which DOC are really leading at the moment. And I can't stress that enough how much having those interagency um, and other groups really working towards achieving a common goal here. We're really looking at that, uh, getting success with that here in Tatanaki, which is great. Um, the monitoring trapping needs, these some kids doing some monitoring in their school grounds, which is really cool. They love that pest detector stuff, that discovery and figuring out the why. Why do we do this? What's the point? Where are we going with this? And recognising that they are those, and those influencers and engagers in their communities and families. So, as you can see there, the, the great sort of initiative that we came up with, which was really great, was having giving all our traps and things to schools and getting them to distribute them to their communities and whānau. And um, they take the proceeds and use that for other environmental projects within their school grounds. And that's been really great. The uptake's been incredible. I can't think of the, the number right now, Toby. It's just it's thousands and thousands of traps that are out there. And these guys are doing it and they're creating projects around that as well. And you see the little kit there, which, we, which they sell and we give away to people for, for the stuff. Um, again, we're doing school trapping on their grounds, or they're doing an adopt a park program. And again, partnering with the NPDC on that and having these students be able to use that public space to get out there and do this stuff as well. And learning about what's in the environment, it really ties into their studies and their sort of restoration work that they're doing. So, again, safe and safe and supervised, very cool. And then you can see some kids really inventing that stuff, making their own traps, getting involved in other parts of that, and incorporating a lot of this into those STEAM subjects as well in the schools, which is really, really great. And again, this outcome monitoring, we might make sure that I won't talk too much about that, it's not my forte, but um, engaging with the community to do those things as well, having people from some of our community groups here, working with us, the scientists and ecologists, on things like five minute bird counts and outcome surveys, things like that's really important because um, that's the way the future's going to be. Once we get rid of predators, their numbers are dropping and dropping, we've got to accelerate our successes and outcomes with the public as well, really important. Having enough time, pretty good, eh? <laughs> Can you guys hear me right? I talk pretty fast and I'm under pressure, right? Um, <laughs> data collection, uh, obviously it's hugely important as this project progresses. We need to know how we're doing, what we're doing where, and how we're going to go about achieving things where we're not getting um, cut through, I guess. Um, and we see that, so using TrapNZ is fantastic, having those tools where we can record the data. Everyone in the public and organisations are built, we're all using the same platform, so it's not really high tech. Um, but very easy having the phone app to record your catches as well. And from that, we can do our research and pull out what we need to do and how we need to change things and, and up the ante a little bit. And like I say, there, it does create that friendly uh, competition amongst our trapping groups because we've formed these communities that 
want to do better, they want to improve what they're doing, and it gives a, a, a really good um, sort of level of interaction in that way. Here's a little example. Uh, so that's Restore Maryland's there. That's just a, a little area of New Plymouth where you've got all your different traps in your backyard. Heaps of work to do there. There's heaps of space there, but it shows a good, a good, um, a good way we've already gone just in a little over a year. So um, the main problem we have now, not problem, but the issue we have there is just getting people to record their catches and keep doing it. So sustaining the motivation for people is the big part of it as well. So that's why you've got to have these different aspects. If people aren't catching anything in the trap for um, you know, months and months or years and years, they're going to lose interest and walk away from it. So it's how do we keep people engaged in that and um, keep that sort of momentum going, I suppose, in different ways. Uh, why restore Tanaki? Obviously, this aligns with the regional goals. Uh, we're just a small part of that. Trapping is just a small part of the picture. We do find it as a pretty good um, gateway drug for conservation because people tend to, they're not, not a drug, a gateway um, activity <laughs> for, uh, for people to get involved. Because it is something you can do if it's safe and supervised, it shows instant results. And um, if we can share these stories from what we're doing, like we're trying to talk today about this, some of these outcomes, we've got, you know, we've got, you know, the Dodgeholes nesting down to the Wapakai River mouth. Um, the public can kind of see these things happening. You might have kaka starting to hang out in parts of the Tehanui walkway, which we're seeing as well. Um, and really great re regenerating a lot of our, um, you know, our forest areas in some parts. So if people can sort of see that stuff, it sort of, it, it, it sort of gives people a, a chance to feed with that bigger picture and feel like they're part of that as well. Uh, and of course, um, Working, yeah, like I said before, it's working with those existing conservation groups and recognising what they, their goals are rather than just saying, this is what we want to achieve, we want you to come on board. It's like, what do you guys want to achieve and how do we support that? So, all, what it's all about is about that ongoing biodiversity restoration and how can we support that and keep that going. So, I have just got finished. <laughs>